All right, this is The Earth and Its Peoples by Richard Bullitt. Chapter 30, Section 2, The Depression. So the Depression is the worst economic, we'll call it downturn, in modern history. All right, the worst economic downturn in modern history. It is also a major cause of World War II. Right, major cause for World War II. So the economic crisis had its origins in the United States when the stock market crashed. Black Thursday is the name for the day. The US stock market crashed. And if you're not familiar, the stock market is essentially an evaluation um, of all the businesses that are listed on it. Typically, if we're talking about the US stock market, we're talking about US businesses. Uh, and it's how much cash and, and resources and wealth that each of these businesses have. When the stock market crashed, what that meant was that businesses were now worth a lot less and couldn't make as many products as they, as they could before, but more importantly, couldn't hire as many workers. And so as the valuation of businesses declined, businesses responded by uh, laying off workers. They were unable to employ workers and employment rose as high as 25% in the United States and even higher in other areas. There were specific cities in the United States where the unemployment percentage could be as high as 50%, 60%. Uh, so this was an inability for people to find jobs. Now, what's important about the crashing of the U.S. stock market is the impact that it had on the rest of the world. So recall that not only is the United States engaged in free trade with a lot of the rest of the world, you know, Latin America, for example, right, trades with the United States. But through the series of war loans, the United States is also linked to the German economy. And because Germany lost the war, they have to pay back both Britain and France right? Reparation payments. Britain and France are paying money back to the United States for everything that they loaned. And then, of course, the British and the French economies are connected to all their colonies. You know, we could connect, uh, you know, India and other parts of the world here. And so when the U.S. stock market crashed in 1929, it had a ripple effect on, you know, the rest of the world. Latin American economies suffered. Germany no longer can make its reparation payments. France, the British economy, and, you know, essentially the entire world economy went down. And so this very dire economic situation, you know, nations responded to it, uh, it pretty similarly, and that was to foster economic protectionism. And this means to protect national, or maybe we'll call it homegrown uh, business. And an example of how countries did this was through tariffs. If we're not entirely familiar, a tariff is a tax on imports. So in other words, to not allow foreign competition to sell their products in your country, you tax them at a very, very high rate that forces people to buy domestic, right? It forces people to buy uh, what essentially was homegrown. The Smoot-Hawley tariff, this was a US tariff in response to the Great Depression and was one of the highest. It is a good example. The Smoot-Hawley tariff is a perfect example of what we mean by economic protectionism. Now, in industrial nations, um, industrial nations pretty much responded to the Great Depression by trying to create more self-sufficient economies, and that was to decrease trade and reliance. So, for example, nations like, but not, you know, limited to, but nations like Germany, Italy, and Japan especially wanted to make sure that their economies could function without any sort of outside help. That was the lesson that was learned from the Depression, especially for the case of Japan, that in order for Japan to survive, it needed to establish a colonial empire that could feed it raw materials and resources because, uh, you know, it wanted to be completely self-sufficient. And this also meant for these nations that war, if, if had to be used, war was necessary. So when we talk about the Great Depression as being one of the major causes to the Second World War, 
A lot of it has to do with the way that nations respond in trying to protect their own national interests in uh, decreasing trade, really refusing trade, and trying to create a self-sufficient economy using warfare if it was necessary, right? If it was necessary. In the United States, unprecedented measures were taken by Franklin Roosevelt. So Franklin Roosevelt is a U.S. president during the Depression. And his plan to solve the Depression was called the New Deal. So this was plan to solve Depression and was incredibly interventionist. And, you know, in the midst of the Depression, while people were, you know, homeless, lining up in, you know, bread lines and soup lines, as you can see from this image here, uh, a lot of people were beginning to question kind of the traditional economic and political institutions. So if you were standing, you know, in 1933, which was in the midst of the Depression, you know, it had looked like capitalism and democracy. Uh, there's a question as to whether these systems, you know, had failed and should nations be looking towards alternative systems. Now, of course, the one part of the world that um, was insulated from this global depression was the USSR, which was the first and only communist regime in the world at the time, the Soviet Union. Their economy was doing pretty well from the outside. The Soviet Union was transforming via Joseph Stalin and five-year plans from an agricultural to an industrial nation. It was very violent. That wasn't really known to the rest of the world at the time. But, you know, communism looked like an alternative. Other nations like Germany and Italy, as we'll discover in the next chapter, will turn towards a new ideology, which is fascism. And we'll talk a little bit about what that is, but it's considered to be a third way. Capitalism, democracy had failed due to the Depression. Communism was an alternative, but it wasn't well uh, supported in Germany and Italy. So the third way was fascism. For non-industrial nations, however, it really hit them hard, especially the ones that were export heavy. So export heavy nations were, we might say, affected the most. You know, so for example, in the Dutch East Indies, which produced rubber, you know, you take, for example, Henry Ford and uh, Ford Automobiles, an American uh, automobile company, uh, they had to fire half their workers. And as a result, they no longer needed the rubber from places like the Dutch West Indies. Uh, Egypt was also a production center of cotton. Textile factories were being shut down in much of the industrial world. And so these commodities were no longer needed. And thus, uh, you know, they felt also uh, a severe downturn due to the, the economic depression.